for the Trump campaign. He joins us now from Columbia, South Carolina. Also with us, CNN senior White House correspondent Jim Acosta, who is live uh, in the East Room. Uh, and Stephen Moore, uh, let me talk to you first. Uh, wh what do you think about the Alexander Acosta pick? Have you worked with him in the past? What do you know about him? I don't know a whole lot about him, uh, Jake. I just uh, went through the uh, release that the press uh, that the press release that the uh, White House just put out about him. Um, and, you know, he has a pretty amazing resume. He certainly knows labor law. Um, he, by the way, one interesting thing about his his, uh, his resume is that he was one of the prosecutors against Jake Abra Jack Abramoff, uh, which I found interesting. Uh, one of the things that I don't I, I don't know the man, but it's a very different pick, Jake, from uh, from uh, the the previous pick uh, who, who just resigned uh, yesterday, um, Andy Puzner, because Andy Puzner was a businessman and had been in one of the lines that a lot of us had used to promote him was he knows how to hire workers, he knows how to increase wages and salaries. Um, this is a more traditional pick, someone who's a lawyer. That's been the tradition of this Labor Department. That's interesting. And Jim Acosta, uh, live for us in the East Room, uh, that's a fair observation uh, by Stephen there. Uh, I would say Andy Puzder is more of the disruptor model of, of Trump nominee, somebody brought in to change the way uh, conventional wisdom is about the Labor Department. This is somebody um, who uh, had very uh, non-traditional views and a non-traditional background for the position, whereas Mr. Acosta, not you, obviously, but Alexander Acosta, is more in the mo mode of what you might see in the George W. Bush administration. In fact, he actually served in the Bush administration himself. Oh, uh, that's right, Jake. And, and we are told, uh, my colleague Sarah Murray is reporting that uh, President Trump met with some of the candidates uh, for uh, this pick today, uh, yesterday afternoon. So this just occurred uh, in the last 24 hours. Obviously, as things were unraveling for Andy Puzder, uh, this White House had to get uh, cracking in, in terms of finding somebody else. And we're told uh, that uh, this just happened yesterday afternoon, that he was uh, talking to some of these candidates, uh, including Alexander Acosta. And, and you're right, Jake, this is much more of an establishment pick. Uh, he served in the Bush administration. He is going to be the first uh, Latino uh, in the cabinet if he's confirmed. Uh, that was a story, obviously, that we followed during the transition process, was whether or not uh, President Trump would actually uh, place a Latino in his cabinet. Uh, and uh, I think another interesting question to watch, Jake, as this unfolds, if, uh, if Alexander Acosta becomes the uh, labor secretary, is what happens, and we had this conversation when the last uh, batch of uh, jobless uh, numbers came out, uh, what will the Labor Department do under an Alexander Acosta when it comes to the unemployment figures? Because as we heard during the campaign, uh, then candidate Trump was very critical of the unemployment figures. He often thought uh, and said publicly at his rallies uh, that he thought that the unemployment rate was much, much higher uh, than where it, it is basically standing right now, which is just below 5%. And so uh, being this a, uh, an establishment pick uh, by President Trump, uh, putting Alexander Acosta over at the Labor Department, uh, my sense of it is, Jake, is that they will continue uh, sort of business at, as usual over at that department when it comes to uh, trusting those figures coming from the federal government. So I, I do think that that is an interesting thing to watch, Jake. Stephen, uh, obviously there's been a lot uh, said and written uh, about uh, working class voters supporting President Trump. That is why uh, he is in the White House. Support from those groups in overwhelming numbers, white working class voters, uh, in, especially in states like Pennsylvania, For Michigan, sure. uh, Wisconsin. What yep. are uh, the big issues uh, that a Labor Secretary Acosta, should that happen, uh, will face uh, having to do with those working class voters, improving their lives? Yeah. Well, there's going to be a lot of labor issues that are going to come up right away, uh, Jake. One of the reasons that the labor unions really wanted to take down my friend Andy Puzder was that he was opposed in many cases to raising the minimum wage. And as you know, with the unions, that's a big issue. Now, I happen to agree with Andy Puzder on that one, but uh, that certainly will, will be a big issue in the months ahead. Another one uh, that is of big interest to the financial community is something called the, the so-called fiduciary duty rule, rule of, 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 inve of investment advice. Who's, who give advice to their clients about whether they have conflicts of interest, and that's bubbled up into a huge issue. Uh, Donald Trump has been very critical of that rule. It's been in the media 
uh, a lot lately. And on this issue of unemployment that you guys were just talking about, I, I don't think Donald Trump wants to change the way the numbers are, are um, put together. I think his point, which is something I agree with, Jake, is that we, we always talk in the media about the headline unemployment rate, which I think right now is 4.7 percent. But there's something, there's another unemployment rate that includes people who've dropped out of the workforce, includes people who, uh, who don't have a full-time job. And that, that unemployment rate number is, close, is about double that. It's closer to 10 percent. And you might see more emphasis in this Labor Department saying, look, this real unemployment rate is a lot higher than the headline number. Stephen, a, a quick question. Uh, I've been getting some emails from yeah. folks who, who know him well, know his background as a former U.S. attorney, yeah. uh, Alexander Acosta. He's the dean of the Florida International University College of Law. Uh, at that university, there are a lot of DACA students, children of undocumented immigrants who were raised here in the United States. There are students there. He hmm. knows these students well. The, the notion that he's now going to be Secretary of Labor and the fact that he has all this experience with all these DACA students, how do you think that will play out? <laughs> That's a great question. I don't, I don't know. But obviously, you know, immigration is a key issue for Donald Trump and restraining illegal immigration is one of his key promises. So we'll see how that all plays out. I want to go back, though, Wolf, if I can, to my original point. I think this is such a departure from Andy Puzder. What a lot of uh, conservatives like myself really liked about Andy was that he was a businessman and it was a, a kind of new approach to the Labor Department, somebody who actually knows something about how to hire workers, how to make it easier for employers to hire workers. Uh, as was said earlier, but it's worth emphasizing, uh, Acosta is much more of a traditional pick for this, uh, so he's not the disruptor that Andy Puzder would have been. All right, Stephen Moore, Jim Acosta, thanks so much. We're going to squeeze in another quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.